good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, my dear friends. Welcome to day number 20 of our 66 days of data. And before we dive into today's topic, let's have a quick intro to see what we're going to learn today. So today it is all about splitting our data. And I wanted to tell you, well, if you leave a comment below this video, no matter where you watch it, I'm going to make sure that I will get a 100% discount voucher out to you guys for the Nime Press ebooks, the great stuff that the good Nimers over there do, which usually cost 20 bucks, I make sure you get them for free. So leave a comment either with book or I want it or hashtag data or whatever below this video. I'll make sure you get the discount voucher. So with that aside, let's have a look at what is our task today. Our task today is we're going to look at splitting and filtering our data. So far we have looked overall at our data set and yesterday we talked about string manipulation and we're going to use string manipulation today as well to do some kind of a helper column, quote unquote, if you want to help us determine because the sections, this category's um, theme is we want to correct the sometimes release date or the release dates in our data set from the Spotify data set that are incorrect. We want to streamline them so we can better work with them. And today we're going to do the first step. So with that aside, let's just quickly switch to the screen. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. So what you can see here is nine, but I wanted to show you a different thing. I wanted to show you where we are. We are in the data exploration in 66 days of data with nine page on the NIME block. And yesterday we entered section number four where we talked about the string manipulation. And today we need to investigate row filtering using the row filter node and row splitting using the row splitter nodes. Investigate how to keep and exclude rows, how to filter based on patterns or on numerical ranges or on missing values. Separate rows in original data set to have all rows with only year in release date on one side and all other rows on the other side. Repeat for rows with only year, month in release date. All right, so let's head over to Nime and let's see what our data set looks like. So let's look at the outport here. And if we look at the release date, we could immediately see sometimes we have year, month, day, sometimes we have year, and we also find some cases where we only have year and month. So that's basically the column we're going to work on. And the very first thing we're going to do, and that's why this um, string manipulation node was introduced to us yesterday is, well, how do we determine which is which? I would say looking at the data here, at the release dates, one thing is pretty clear. Oh, where is the release date? Where do we have it? Just a moment. Um, oh, there it is. No. Basically, if the date is correct, it will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten characters. If it's only year, it will have four characters. And if it's only year and month, it will have the year dash and then month in two digits. It will have seven digits or seven characters. And basically that's what we're going to determine. We're going to use string manipulation like yesterday. And we drag and drop it onto the canvas here. Connect it like this. Comment on it or give it a name. Determine length of release underscore date. That one needs to be bold because that's the column name. All right, and if you remember yesterday's, um, let me just open this up. Ooh, that crashed nine. That should not happen. 
that was not what I wanted to happen, unfortunately, my friends. But that's how it works in a live stream. <laughs> Sometimes uh, things uh, crash. So maybe I just share with you some some um, information, basically, um, on what you can um, do with filters. Well, what I'm going to or what I'm planning to do here in um, today's live stream is basically, um, I guess, what we will do is we will split the data right because when we filter we're losing we're ruling out a certain amount of data which we don't want to do at the end of the day we want to have all our 580 something thousand tracks in here because we want to adjust the dates for the ones where the release date is incorrect and nine is back up um so let's just go in here again so like this and let's give it another try. All right, we just um, kill this, go to day 20. Hopefully it loads without any problems. And we select this. We search for the string manipulation. We double click to edit and we right click and say configure. All right, here we are. So the function we're going to use here is length and we find that if we scroll down here and here we can see to determine the length of the string so the length the string nine would be five the length of the string nine with two spaces would be seven so we just double click it like this and then the cursor is within these brackets and we just double click on the available column list on the release date so this basically says give me the length of the of the values that we have in the column release date and we call it release date length we create a new column all right click okay now we label it and say it um calc length of release date like this and then we right click and execute it and as we're talking about nearly 600,000 rows of data, that takes a moment. But nevertheless, it's still, it's already finished. And if we look here, we have 10, 4, 10, 4. And I guess somewhere we might also, let's just scroll down a little bit. We might also have sevens in here somewhere. One thing we could do here, for example, we could say sort descending. So at the beginning, we have the 10th. And then we have the, oh, wait a minute. Just scroll down here. So we should get to the next category of dates. I mean, what we're talking about here are 586,000 lines of data. So it takes a moment until you scroll through. So here we have the sevens, you see. And then if we scroll down further, we have the fours. So if we just look at the sevens, we do not have that many. Ooh, we do not have that many sevens. So we do not have that many cases where um, our release date is basically um, year and month. But if we look at it, see here, we have 1976, February, 1979, August, right? So we want to make this 1979, August 1st. Or 1976 February 1st that's what we want to do at the end so how do we do that now that we have determined the column that holds our rule quote unquote what we're going to do next is we're going to apply a row splitter so that is this little body here so double click to connect it and you see that it has two output ports let me just show you how the row filter looks like if we add this one, it has a single output port. The thing is, I can show you basically the logic here, right? I could say, for example, well, if we look at the here here in the, at the top, we say which column do we want to test for this for this filter? And in the, our case, it's just the column we just created. It's a numeric column release date length. Do we have any patterns in here? Well, no. What we want to do is we want to filter out everything that is um, smaller than 10. So basically what we do is um, basically what we will do is 
we would say like this. And if we execute it now, we will have here all values that are 10, 10 or greater. And as we only have 10 uh, uh, in, in our data set here, so that's with the ones with that. But the, the thing is, um, we would basically um, we would basically need to do it like this. So we keep all the fours and the sevens in here, right? So if we execute this one, now we should now we have everything in here, or we could do nine. So that's a little bit inconvenient because we have to do multiple uh, nodes in a row. And I personally like the row splitter a little bit better because it follows the same logic. So we just say um, we want to have tenth as the lower bound. And we have an upper bound as well. So that would be the range. But in this case, we only have the lower bound. And in this case, we want to include the rows by attribute value. We could also say exclude rows by attribute value. Um, one thing we also could do, and that's a very common use case in NIME, is sometimes you have missing values and you don't want them in your data set. Then you would click exclude rows by attribute value and then say only missing values match. Right, that reads like exclude everything that is a missing value, but that's not what we want to do here. So we say use range checking, lower bound 10, and we include those. And then we just say, okay, let's execute. And we see at the upper port filtered, we have all the 10th. If we scroll down, only 10th, right? And we have all the sevenths and the fourth here. Here are the fours and some sevens along the way. I guess if we just order this descending, we would see the sevens at the top. Right here are the sevens. It's only a few. But nevertheless, it's still 138,000. And we don't want to lose this data because we want to adjust it later on and then put it back together. The next thing we're going to do, well, we add just another row, row, uh, row splitter here. So. Let's go here, splitter, and we add another row splitter here. But first things first, first we save, then we name filter out less than 10. We basically, um, we could also say a little bit more descriptive maybe, release date length less than 10 and here we basically filter out release date length less than seven All right so like this basically say the same but this time we say seven okay and if we execute this one we should have the sevens at the top, only 2,000 rows. And we would have the ones, the 130 something thousand rows with um, release date length fourth at the bottom. So this, at this point in time, usually whenever I introduce NIME to people, I get a question, hey, Phil, isn't that a big disadvantage to chain these things together? Where is the advantage over nested formulas in Microsoft Excel, for example? And I can tell you where the advantage is. You can create basically this kind of workflow here that you see here. You create it once and then you just, if you are here, for example, let's just reset this. You just execute the last node and it runs automatically, hands-free, within seconds. It has processed millions of data items. So that's how you how I would approach it. And we now have basically the correct date column at this output port. We have the date column where we have the year and the month at the upper output port here. And we have the um, date columns where we have the release date with only the year um, basically here at the lower output port. And now we can basically, in the next videos, we can basically um, 
work on these, correct these. We would potentially also add string manipulation nodes in next to add the um, month number one or the day number one as it is intended in this section. And then at the very end, we concatenate it all together again. So basically, um, what I would uh, what I would um, say, um, what we are going to do next is we just have uh, another look then at the um, at the, uh, the data file uh, that we have at the at the instructions. So we basically had um, this one now done. We looked at row filtering. We looked at row splitting, and in the next step, we will um, make sure that we get the uh, date in the correct format. We will. I guess use the string manipulation node again, or they also speak about concatenate uh, node. Um, so that's where we put all the different streams that we split it up in this part, put them back together before we then turn everything into a date and time object and before we extract the year as a separate column. So that's it for today. As I said before, if you leave a comment, below this video or uh, a like. Um, so basically leave a comment with yes or book or discount or voucher or whatever you want to say to me, whatever question you have, then I will make sure I get the 100% discount voucher for the great Nime Press beginners and advanced books out to you so you don't have to pay for them as a viewer of these videos. So that is basically everything for today. I hope I see you tomorrow in 66 days of data with Nime. Bye-bye.